Now with var, you can do other strange things as well as you learned. For example, you can redeclare the same variable when you already did that in the same scope. So this here would fail if we use let or const, but it will actually work with var. And therefore now if I reload here, you see manual being printed because that's the value of the variable after I redeclared it. Now, as I mentioned before, reassigning a value is absolutely fine and something you commonly do. Redeclaring a variable is something you actually never need to do and therefore this is something you want to avoid. So that were some behaviors of var which let doesn't support and I'd say it's a good thing that it doesn't support it. There also are other things in JavaScript. For example, you can create a variable without any keyword at all, so just like this. If you save that and you reload your file, you see max is getting printed here. And that might be strange because I did use neither var nor let nor const here. Now actually that's a default behavior of JavaScript because JavaScript is quite a forgiving language. It sees that you missed a keyword here, but in the end this can only be a variable declaration and therefore it invisibly adds var. Now it is something you can rely on in your code, but you absolutely shouldn't. You should avoid things like that because it's just bad code to write your scripts like this. People reading your code might think that maybe you declared this variable username somewhere earlier in this file and therefore they might go looking for it and never find it, which costs them time. Or that it's even defined in some other script which you import before this script and which would therefore expose username as a global variable. That would be possible, right? So people might think that this is declared somewhere else and might be looking for it when you actually just forgot to add var, let or const. Now actually to disable such forgiving behavior, JavaScript has a special mode which you can turn on and that's the strict mode. It was introduced with ES5 and even though modern JavaScript syntax as you're learning it in this course already prohibits some of the things you can rule out with strict mode, it might still be worth turning it on. Though I'll leave that up to you, I typically don't turn it on in this course because I avoid these strange behaviors and we don't write such code. But if you want to be super safe, you can always turn it on in a file or actually also just inside of a function if you wish to by adding a string at the beginning of that file or at the beginning of that function where you want to enable it. Now that's not a string being stored in some, some variable, but it's really just a string dumped into the script like this. And in there you put the two words use strict and then a semicolon after this. And you can also use single quotes here if you want to, doesn't matter. Might look strange, but browsers understand this, they pick this up. And they now know that you want to turn on strict mode for this script or for this function where you place this in. So only for this script, not for all scripts on your web page, just for this script or for this function where it's placed in. And strict mode disables certain behaviors. So for example, behaviors like this. And attached you find a link with a full list of features or behaviors that are disabled by strict mode. So with strict mode enabled, for example, if you now reload here, you get an error, username is not defined. Previously, that was not the case. Previously, that worked. Now you get an error, which is good because you don't want to allow that behavior here. So let's now add var or even better, let or const again here. Another feature which was disabled is that you could use reserved name and assign values to it. For example, if you used undefined, which is a reserved name because that's a special value in JavaScript, as a variable name, then without strict mode, if I comment this out, this will actually work. If I now reload, this works, we get no error. Now that already changes if we use let or const, and that's what I meant, the modern syntax already disables some of these behaviors, but if I use let or const here and I reload, we get an error that it has already been declared because it's built into JavaScript. And we also would get an error if we would use var, which we shouldn't, but if we would, and we turn on strict mode. If we do that, strict mode turned on and we use var and we try to assign a value to undefined. Now if we reload here, we also get an error here. A different error message, but still we get one. So that is strict mode. Turning it on certainly is an option, though as I mentioned in this course you will already learn uh, patterns and a syntax which doesn't use these bad behaviors, still you can turn it on to be super safe. Modern JavaScript with let and const also already prohibits and avoids certain of these behaviors, like this thing with undefined you just saw. And if you want to use strict mode attached, as I mentioned, you find a full list of features which are now disabled thanks to strict mode. And therefore with strict mode, 
But most importantly, with Latin const and all the other modern JavaScript syntax you're learning in this course, JavaScript really is a great language where you can write good code. Just be aware that in the past, and of course still in the present, if you don't use const and let, if you don't follow these patterns, it is possible to write pretty messy JavaScript code. It's a forgiving language, and whilst forgiving always sounds great, in programming it typically isn't. Now, JavaScript, ECMAScript, advances in a direction where more and more features are introduced, like let and const, that allow you to write cleaner code, and therefore you should use that, but it is important to be aware of the past and these other parts of JavaScript, which are also part of the language, if you really want to be a JavaScript developer.